Well, I'm sitting here at the Fugard Theatre where Reverend Frank Ciccani, former Director General in the President's Office, just launched his latest book, The Things That Could Not Be Said. Of course, this follows on from his previous book, Eight Days in September, where he told the story of the removal of former President Thabo Mbeki. This story, however, talks about his own perspective inside the, inside the presidency and some of the contentious calls and policy decisions that were made during the Mbeki era. What follows are some of those stories around the contentious calls and policy decisions ad, as made during the Mbeki era in a very novel interview done by Minister Trevor Manuel. Ma, I yeah. want to go to, 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 to A to Z. Yeah, A to Z. No. Yeah, you say. There's a book that I consider to be Albert Nolan's classic book. Yeah. Now you the book read, is entitled you, Jesus you Before have, Christian. You have read the book. I think you've read the book. When I first <laughs> heard the title, I wondered what Albert Nolan meant. In the yeah. book, Nolan managed to make the point that many of us remember the historical man called Jesus from the perspective of the crucifixion, but not the man before the crucifixion. And then you say, I consider Becky's HIV and AIDS story to be such an event. Yeah. Uh, I'm provoking yeah, this discussion probably. because yeah. it's very important. Yeah. Yeah. The perspective with which you deal with the man who is your comrade, your friend, your boss, the president. Because this book is about that. This book, as you say, the, the, the editor said, well, you can take this, this book, Eight Days, and bury it inside A to Z. Yeah. So the context is very important. I want to ask whether, whether you weren't too in awe of the individual. That's a question I want to ask, to, to yeah. ask about. Yeah. What is actually a very difficult issue, but I, I think quite important that we talk about, and that's the HIV and AIDS man. Now let me, let, me, let me also provoke, because we lived through this period together. Yeah. Some of it was very painful. You referred to this pain. Some of the pain was the pain about Madiba in the NEC that yeah, comes later. NEC, yeah. But I want, to, I want to perhaps invite you to, to cast your mind back and, and reorder the way in which your story is written. One of the first issues is we are concerned about what seemed to be something outside of South Africa now beginning to take root, the story of it. And we, we're grasping at straws because in the world of spies, you know, Le Carré has written The Constant Gardener about how pharmaceutical companies behave in these situations. Um, and <laughs> so we're clutching at straws. And actually, one of the first issues that happened one of the first issues that happened is actually Ngema's uh, Sarafina story. There's an endeavor to talk to young people in a language that they understand. And if music be that language, then that, that would be the medium. But the country doesn't understand that. They're not ready for this. They think it's, an, it's a waste of money. It's a waste of money. Why would you produce a musical to talk to young people? So there's already a resistance about issues. Then comes something else, and I, I put this earlier. I put it where it belongs in 97, as you point out, as you remind us, the viral deed matter. The viral deed matter, yeah. But by the time Thabo Mbeki is, is, is installed as president, inaugurated as president on the 16th of June, 1999, each one of us is wearing a red ribbon. And you make the point that to arrive in any meeting without the symbol, that you wouldn't survive. You meeting. wouldn't survive. You, yeah. would be, you would be ostracized. But the way in which a story spun out from there became exceedingly difficult. If anybody here took the time and trouble to go and check if there are photo reports of the in, inauguration of Calvin Becky at the Union Building, 16th of, of, of June, 1999, you will see that nobody anywhere close to the podium is not wearing a red ribbon. They had a red ribbon, yeah. yeah. But what happened? What happened in the course of this? And I'm asking you against yeah, the backdrop again. of my earlier question, 
about what color spectacles you've been wearing about this. I can see that you, you're, you're writing a thesis about the prophet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's actually quite interesting that you've contrasted the two issues. I mean, the first, it's really, remember, we do the, the script, we clean it up, he's going to make the speech of his resignation. And he leaves us in a room. He goes and makes the speech. And then he returns. And as I sat in that room, you know, that's the, I was describing how the feeling was. It was almost like the disciples sitting there and saying he's crucified. You know what I'm talking about. That's, what I, that's the image. And then the other way, the other one, which I never thought I would contrast in that way, but that's quite interesting. I mean, the, the, the issue about Nolan's book is that his thesis really is that it's the title is Jesus Before Christianity. He's looking for Jesus before Christianity because after the crucifixion, he's seen through the crucifixion looms and becomes the window through which the, the window through which you understand him. Now, I was saying that the issue about AIDS happened, the crisis happened within a very short time. If you take it from 94 up to 2000, Mbeki was the orthodox chief who forced us, I used to keep, I don't like putting things on my, labeling myself. I used to put it in the pocket so when he appears I can pluck it quickly. <laughs> because he would not accept anybody who works with him. He really campaigned on HIV and AIDS, and orthodox, everything, until that fateful October month in 99, when a Smith, I don't remember the name, you know, somebody made a statement about rape. And they, yeah, yes, about rape, and Becky thought that was suggesting blacks were promiscuous. That, that's, that's really what he thought. And he made a statement. From there on, the issues about questions on AIDS arose. But even then, up to 2002, we're still doing viral deal. Because you can't do viral deal without believing that HIV, and HIV causes AIDS. You can't do that research. You have to do that research in that direction. And so by 2000, we hit the crisis. <coughs> by 2001, he's a denialist in terms of the conference he convened. By 2003, we solved that problem. That's, that's how I, I, I have understood. We resolved the matter by saying to Becky, you've made your point. By the way, he holds very strong views about it. You've made your point. Please allow us to develop a policy that's going to be policy of government. You can go and read the details about it. But what I'm saying is that that period was short, but it looked like everything Becky ever did was HIV and AIDS. You know what I'm talking about, everything. The African Renaissance you know, program, conflict resolution in the continent, all the other things were completely shaded by this HIV and AIDS. I think that's the imagery I'm trying to use, and maybe I might be misunderstood by using that. Indeed, it was a very difficult time. I was with him all the time. And Becky is a researcher. He researches people who accuse him of pretending, I mean, playing a scientist. But Mbeki would not accept that if you say neverapine, use neverapine, he will say, where does it, why was it produced? And you'll Google it. You'll get it to Germany. How is it prescribed in Germany? No, it's not prescribed the way it's prescribed here. Why? And then you go to WHO and find that WHO has actually made a compromise to say for poor countries, you can use it this way, but you can't use it that way for rich countries. Because it has got, it has, it builds resistance and will create a, a problem. So that's what they would get involved and question you about. 
And then the more he got attacked, the more he invited uh, the denialists to come and debate this. You know what I'm talking about? I know. I know. Yeah, and then he gets the denialists and the orthodox people wants to put them in one room to debate this thing. And that's where I think things are wrong. Oh. Because I said, being in that office, the president should never have been the person who invited people for that meeting. It should have been in other people. President of a country doesn't do that. So it was a very difficult moment. And that's what I'm describing. I'm not, um, I mean, I have a, indeed, I have a great respect for Becky. I can't deny that. I mean, he's a brilliant person. He's extraordinary. When you work with him, you have to cope up with him. In fact, people who say he's not, uh, what is it, they say he's not uh, accessible, he's not approachable, he's not, he, he turns people away. It's people who come once, twice, and thrice, they realize they look foolish and they don't go out. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? It's Ask me. Ask, Ask me. <laughs> Be, because he did that. We, we worked with him and you, you yeah. kind of needed Bio Plus <laughs> and the Rocker Booster because he would keep you awake before four in the morning debating with you. Debating with you, yeah. But l let me just say the one last thing about this thing because I, I, I can be misunderstood, but I'm trying to get the public out there to understand how the man functioned because you'll understand him better. I mean, we leave him with a speech for Parliament. And in the morning, 7 o'clock, we get a text, it's changed. And then it has got statistics about money flowing from East Germany to West Germany. You'll remember that speech. Lots of numbers, and, and he's done the computation himself. It's not just extracting from a document, he analyzes it. And it's in the spree speech. And I said, but we can't have the president making this speech without having checked the numbers. And, and the only thing we could do between seven and nine was for me to use my mathematics and say, check the proportionalities. If he did this and that, does it make sense? It doesn't. And then you found one number, just purely on proportional analysis. That was wrong. And we changed the number. Now, but it's a president So it's who, your maths that caused the trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the point I'm making is that he was, he, Working with him was a nightmare. <laughs> and, and so, in a sense, even when he gets into the HIV and AIDS story, he really goes with boom into it, and it becomes very difficult. But the good news is that in the third chapter, because there are three chapters on pharmaceuticals and HIV and AIDS, the last chapter is the one that describes how we turn it around. In 2003, cabinet adopted a policy. The policy you are using now, that framework was done in 2003. But because the media kept on dealing with him rather than the policy, people think he left whilst we still had a crisis in, on HIV and AIDS. Actually, we had turned it around um, and the program had started operating and it has been refined now. I think we've got the best policy on HIV and AIDS as we speak. 